Irish heart gets the same. Thank you. I, um, we, we do actually have the easy part. Um, so I'm a firm, we're firm believers of the powers of positive thinking. So we want you to support our next speaker uh, that, uh, that his spirit will be strong and that uh, he would, he's been tasked to capture three days of intense work to, to present to you. And it's really the work of what we're doing today. This is the work part. So I'd like to call Adam Harding. I'll, I'll, he's, no, he's got, okay. Adam is gonna, he's, he's a high school student from, from which school? Pearson College. Huh? Pearson College. <laughs> Boy, this morning he was a high school student. <laughs> Now, now that's the power of positive thinking. Okay, okay, thank you. From BC, so Adam, you're you're tasked with uh, smarting us all up, I guess, and uh, the reading of the call to action that has been developed by a team that's been with us throughout the proceedings. So the floor is yours, Adam. If a new generation comes forward every 22 years, seven generations back would put us in the year 1855. We learned at this conference that this was the era when large scale logging and resource harvesting began in the Salish Sea. The tribes of Puget Sound were signing treaties in 1855 to reserve their rights for hunting, fishing, and gathering in perpetuity. Vancouver Island was leased to the Hudson Bay Company, and native people were being decimated by smallpox and measles. The Salish Sea was on the threshold of unimaginable cultural and ecological change. Seven generations later, in 2009, it feels once again as though we are on the brink of precipitous change. The climate is warming up, and so are the open waters of the Salish Sea. Many species that form the basis of traditional foods and important economic sectors are disappearing. Chief Leah George Wilson asks, how will we celebrate the first salmon of the season if none return? How can we teach our children to harvest shellfish when the beds have been poisoned? People are part of ecosystems, and the health of the ecosystem will affect the health of the children. All of us that have participated in this conference came here with one important question to answer. What are we going to do to restore and protect the Salish Sea? Hundreds of important actions have been identified in all of the sessions over the past three days. Session chairs, presenters, and participants have come together in an important process of prioritizing actions across a broad spectrum of issues and themes. These actions have been gathered by the Call to Action team and will be assembled following the conference, circulated to conference participants, and used in the development of the agenda for the next Puget Sound Georgia Basin Conference in 2011. While we can't cover every detail, it is the spirit of the work done over the past three days that has been captured in the call to action. First, we call on ourselves, our leaders, and all citizens of the Salish Sea to take action. Take actions that have been prioritized in plans, to monitor, to ensure our actions are effective, and to learn from our experience. We call for broad commitment to implement this Puget Sound action agenda. The action agenda calls for protecting the parts of the ecoregion that still function well, restoring the parts that don't, preventing polluted stormwater runoff from flowing into the waters, 
and working together in new partnerships.